previous lecture, we saw how to create a repository using git init command. And in this one, we'll be first of all taking a look at the configuration file that gets created at the project level. And then we'll go on to see how we can make our first commit and view that commit. So the first thing that we'll be doing is checking the config file that was created at the project level. So here we are inside the .git directory and this is the config file. Now I've opened this config file in my Visual Studio Code editor and this is what you see inside it. Repository format version, file mode, bear, legal reference updates, symbolic links and ignore case. Now, if by any chance you delete this .git directory, then obviously you will lose all the syncing that is going to happen in Git. So you'll basically lose Git metadata, which is not advisable if you are willing to work with Git. So you don't have to actually do anything in this directory. It's just that for knowledge purpose, you should be aware that what exists where. Now, once that's done, let's first of all understand how we should be committing the changes in Git. So whenever you are committing a change, you're supposed to tell what you are committing. Usually, the structure is that you write the first line as a summary line, and then you put a space, and after that, you write the description, what exactly has been fixed, and the message should always be in present tense, and it should be descriptive enough. One can include bug number in the summary itself so that people know what it is referring to, and that will also ensure that bugs are also having a history of when they were actually resolved. Now, once we are aware of it, let's go ahead and make some changes in our code repository. So here, I'll be creating a new file. Just click on this and let's create a new file. So I've given it a name, git init.txt, and this is a txt file, and now I'm saving this. So what I've done over here is I have created a file and I added some text to it. Now, if I have to commit this, the first thing that I need to do is tell git to accept all the changes. For that, I'll be writing git add then a dot. So when you say dot, it means all the changes. Obviously, you have the option of committing specific set of files, but since this is beginning and we are pretty new to it, let's go ahead with the default step that's committing all the changes. So I'm saying git add and then a dot. Once you do that, the next step that you have to do is commit it. So the first thing I did was I told Git what are the changes. Now I'm committing these changes to Git. So for that, I'll be writing Git commit and then minus M for message. And then as I mentioned earlier, the message itself. So since this is demo, so we can say github 01, then space, and then I can say initial commit. Let's keep it short and simple for this one and press enter. Now you can see that it has committed it, gh01 initial commit. It says one file changed, one insertions, create mode, and then the name of the file. Now, if I want to see what was the commit I made, I have the option of git log, which will tell me what was the commit. So it basically lists all the commits that are there. Obviously, you can shorten it by specifying the numbers. For instance, git log minus n and then space total number of logs that you would like to see. There are other options as well, which I would request you to explore on your own, and that is accessible via git log help. There was a single dash git log help. And here you have these options coming up, like source, use mail, map, mail map, decorate, range file, various other stuff. You also have the option of filtering out the logs based on since and until date timestamps. So all those can be explored. So we just saw how to do a commit and how to view 
the comment that you made. In the next one, we'll be exploring further.